Cervical ectopic pregnancy is a rare condition in which the fertilized egg implants itself below the internal cervical opening. It affects 1 in 10,000 deliveries and is more common in women who have undergone previous curatage, 50% of cases, and cesarean delivery, 16% of cases. Uterine manipulation from hysteroscopy and history of in vitro fertilization may also increase the risk of cervical ectopic pregnancy. The symptoms of this condition typically include vaginal bleeding and abdominal discomfort. The following criteria are used to diagnose a cervical pregnancy. 1. No gestational sac, fetal pole, or yolk sac should be inside the endometrial cavity. 2. The shape of the uterus should be hourglass-like. 3. A gestational sac should be present within the cervical canal, and 4. The internal cervical opening is closed. In this longitudinal scan of a cervical pregnancy, the gestational sac is seen within the cervix while the internal cervical opening ICO remains closed. This image shows a cervical pregnancy, indicating an enlarged cervix and parts of the gestational sac. This ultrasound shows a cervical pregnancy after a medical injection. There is no gestational sac within the endometrial cavity, EC. The image also shows the general area of the internal cervical opening, IO. Trophoblastic tissue is visible inside the endocervical canal and the cervix. This is the same patient demonstrating trophoblastic tissue in the endocervical canal. During an incomplete abortion, there may be tissue left inside the cervix. The level of the internal cervical opening can be determined by using transvaginal ultrasound and noting the insertion of the uterine arteries with color Doppler, which will indicate the level of the ICO. Color Doppler will also illustrate the vascular supply to the trophoblastic tissue. In contrast, in incomplete abortions, the trophoblastic blood supply is disrupted. Incomplete abortion may be distinguished from a cervical pregnancy by the sliding sign in which a gestational sac from a detached intrauterine pregnancy slides towards the cervical canal with uterine pressure on the intervaginal probe. In a review of the management of cervical pregnancies, the following is suggested. 1. Primary medical management of early cervical pregnancy is associated with less bleeding and fewer hysterectomies compared with surgical management. 2. Non-viable cervical pregnancies can be treated with systemic methotrexate. 3. Viable cervical pregnancies can be treated with local injections of methotrexate or potassium chloride. 4. Surgery should be reserved for failed medical management or patients presenting with catastrophic hemorrhage. 5. Surgical options include dilatation and curatage with circlage or insertion of a Foley catheter to control bleeding. Ovarian ectopic pregnancies are a rare occurrence, making up only 2% of all ectopic pregnancies. Factors associated with this type of pregnancy include assisted reproductive technology procedures, 18%, and the use of intrauterine devices, IUDs, 19%. Symptoms of ovarian ectopic pregnancies are similar to those of tubal ectopic pregnancies and may include bleeding and pain. In some cases, circulatory collapse has been reported in up to 21% of cases. This image shows an ovarian pregnancy where the embryo inside the gestational sac within the ovary is non-viable. The criteria for diagnosing an ovarian pregnancy include the following. 1. The pregnancy occurs in its usual position within the ovary. 2. The gestational sac and therefore the ovary, must be attached to the uterus by the ovarian ligament. 3. The wall of the gestational sac must contain ovarian tissue that is histologically proven, and 4. The fallopian tube on the affected side must be intact.
In an ovarian pregnancy, a transvaginal ultrasound can define a gestational sac within normal ovarian tissue, which cannot be separated from the surrounding ovary through gentle palpation. The assessment also involves using color Doppler, which reveals two areas of vascularity in the ovary. The first is the ring of fire surrounding the corpus luteum, and the second is the increased vascularity caused by the trophoblastic proliferation which is usually thick and echogenic. In a recent review, over half of ovarian ectopic pregnancies were managed with laparoscopy, while medical management had a 50% success rate in some cases. Laparoscopy is used for both diagnosis and treatment, including wedge resection. The number of ectopic pregnancies within cesarean section scars is rising due to the increase in the number of cesarean sections performed. If a woman has had a previous cesarean section and is experiencing early pregnancy symptoms along with sudden abdominal pain in the area of the previous incision, immediate medical attention is necessary. This image shows a midline sagittal view of a transvaginal ultrasound with a gestation in the location of a prior cesarean scar. This is a 3D rendering of a cesarean scar ectopic pregnancy, as shown by a transvaginal ultrasound. Ectopic pregnancies are characterized by pain, bleeding, and the presence of a mass. Reproductive failures such as a history of tubal disease and smoking are risk factors that can help in diagnosing and managing the condition. Other risk factors include uterine anomalies, a history of assisted reproduction, and pelvic infection. In this sagittal view of a transvaginal ultrasound, a thin endometrial lining, combined with a positive pregnancy test and or elevated levels of beta-HCG may indicate ectopic pregnancy. If an intrauterine pregnancy is not visible during a transvaginal ultrasound, there is a possibility of a tubal ectopic pregnancy. However, the diagnosis can be excluded if a definitive gestational sac with a yolk sac is present, but the presence of fluid within the endometrial cavity without a yolk sac does not rule out the diagnosis. In rare cases, there may be a heterotopic gestation where one gestational sac appears consistent with an intrauterine pregnancy while another simultaneous pregnancy is ectopic in location. To confirm the likelihood of a tubal ectopic pregnancy, one of the following conditions must be met. 1. Presence of an irregular adnexal mass that is separate from the ovary. 2. Presence of an empty gestational sac outside of the uterus, with a hyperechoic ring in the adnexal region, and 3. Presence of an extrauterine sac in the adnexal region, which contains a yolk sac or fetal pole with or without cardiac activity. In this example of ectopic pregnancy, note the inhomogeneous masses increased vascularity in the left adnexa. This image depicts an adnexal mass with a central anechoic area with a hyperchoic ring, bagel sign, which is suggestive of an ectopic pregnancy. This image of an ectopic pregnancy demonstrates an adnexal mass containing an embryo with cardiac activity. In this case of a tubal ectopic pregnancy, an empty gestational sac is observed in the adnexa region, surrounded by increased vascularity. A pregnancy diagnosis is sometimes made, but the location of the pregnancy is not readily apparent. A consensus statement of definitions and outcomes was published for pregnancy of unknown locations. There are five different categories for a pregnancy of unknown location, which are as follows. 1. Definite ectopic pregnancy. This refers to an extrauterine gestational sac that has either a yolk sac and or an embryo, with or without cardiac activity. 2. Probable ectopic refers to an inhomogeneous adnexal mass or an extrauterine sac-like structure. 3. Pregnancy of unknown location. This refers to a situation where there are no signs of either an ectopic pregnancy or an intrauterine pregnancy. 4. Probable intrauterine pregnancy refers to an intrauterine echogenic sac-like structure. 5. Definite intrauterine pregnancy. This refers to an intrauterine gestational sac with either a yolk sac and or an embryo, 
with or without cardiac activity. This image shows a definite ectopic pregnancy. Note the adnexal mass with a yolk sac, which is a definitive diagnostic sign for ectopic pregnancy. This image shows a possible ectopic pregnancy. It depicts a grayscale ultrasound of the right adnexa, where the fallopian tube appears thickened and heterogeneous. Within the ampulla region of the right fallopian tube, there is a round, solid, hypercoic structure that has a central cystic component, indicated by arrows. However, no fetal pole, fetal heartbeat, or yolk sac can be seen. The right ovary is located more laterally and separate from the ectopic pregnancy and appears to be intact. This is an image of an uncomplicated tubal ectopic pregnancy. Transvaginal ultrasound color Doppler ultrasound image shows a peripheral rim of flow, dashed arrows, around the fallopian ectopic pregnancy, solid arrow. The uterus and endometrium demonstrated no signs of intrauterine pregnancy. This intrauterine gestational sac is suggestive of a probable intrauterine pregnancy. This image shows a definitive intrauterine pregnancy with embryo, yolk sac, and fetal cardiac activity. Congratulations! This concludes the course, Atypical Ectopic Pregnancies and Workup of Pregnancy of Unknown Origin.